In this video, I'm planning on talking about refrigeration cycles. And refrigeration cycles are basically the opposite of a heat engine cycle. So in a heat engine cycle, you're taking heat in and you're converting that heat into work. And in a refrigeration cycle, we're removing heat. So we're using, we're inputting work to remove heat from a space or from something. So for instance, in your refrigerator at home, you're inputting work, so it's plugged in, and so you're inputting electrical work. You're taking heat from the refrigerated space and you're moving that heat out into the room. So let's just draw a diagram of what's going on here. And in a previous video, I think it was this, the one where I talked about the introduction to the second law, we had already seen a, a refrigeration cycle where we just we just had a basically a box drawn and we didn't specify what was in the box. We just called it a basically a black box. Now we're going to actually look at what's inside the box and see how the refrigeration cycle is working. So basically we have a, what's called the sink just because we're rejecting heat to the sink and this is going to be the high temperature and then we have um, a low temperature here. So this is the sink and the source. So we're taking heat from so we're taking heat from say inside the refrigerator and we're transferring that heat out into the room air. So this is going to be Q low. And so this is the heat that we're taking out. And this is Q high. And this is the heat that's being rejected to the room. And then in order to move that heat, basically we're moving heat from a low temperature source to a high temperature source, which isn't going to just happen on its own because remember heat tra will transfer from high temperature to low temperature. So if we want to do that in the opposite way, we need to input work. So we have some work in. And so let's look at what we actually have in here. So first of all, um, right here, so let, let's just start here. So we have a condenser. The fluid inside this condenser is going to be basically condensing and heat is going to be removed from the fluid. And like the, like the heat engine, we still have a working fluid flowing through our, through our cycle. And in a refrigerator, this working fluid is normally some kind of refrigerant. So, so we have the condenser. Um, right here, we have a compressor. So this is the compressor. And then fluid is going to flow into the compressor from... The, so right here we have an evaporator. And this is, the evaporator is really technically just a boiler, but in a, in a refrigeration cycle it's called the evaporator. And then right here, so before the evaporator we have a throttle. So the fluid flows from the condenser to the throttle. So what the throttle is doing is it's reducing, so when the, the fluid goes through the condenser, it's at high pressure, it gets to the throttle, the throttle is going to decrease the pressure of the fluid to the pressure of the evaporator, because the evaporator is going to have a lower pressure than the, than the condenser. And this evaporator, so the fluid is going to, so the throttle is going to drop the pressure of the fluid, or the refrigerant, the refrigerant is going to go into the evaporator, the evaporator is going to turn the liquid into vapor, and in order for the liquid to be turned into vapor, it needs heat. And so it's going to remove, the evaporator is going to remove heat from whatever we're trying to cool, so this might be the inside of the refrigerator, and it's going to use that heat to turn the refrigerant from a liquid into a vapor. And then this, this fluid is going to go from the evaporator into the compressor. The compressor is going to compress the fluid, so it's going to be raising the pressure of the fluid 
And when it does that, it's also going to be increasing the temperature of the fluid. And so the temperature of the fluid is going to be increased to a temperature higher than the heat sink. So it's going to be, the compressor will be increasing the temperature of the fluid to a temperature that's higher than, than T high. And so then when the fluid gets to the condenser, it's at a higher temperature than T high. And so it's going to lose heat to the, to the sink. And, and then the, the fluid's going to flow through the condenser back out to the throttle and the cycle is going to continue. And typically in a refrigeration cycle, we're going to be using some sort of refrigerant. So what we want to do is figure out, we want to basically do the same thing we were doing with the heat engine. So with the heat engine, we calculated what the highest efficiency was that we could have. In the case of the refrigeration cycle, we're going to be calculating something similar to the efficiency, but it's not actually going to be called efficiency. It's going to be called the coefficient of performance. So one difference between the refrigeration process versus, say, a heat engine process is with the heat engine, we couldn't get more work than heat that we put in. Like It would always be less. So our work is always going to be less than the heat we put in, and that's because we had to have a certain amount of heat rejected. With the refrigeration cycle, we can actually remove more heat than, so more heat can be removed from the refrigerated space than the work input. So the heat removed can be greater than the work input. So basically we end up with, if we were to calculate our efficiency the same way that we calculate the thermal efficiency, this it, we can end up with a value greater than one. And so for a refrigeration cycle, the term coefficient of performance is used instead of uh, instead of an effic a thermal efficiency because it can be greater than one, and you can't have a thermal efficiency that's greater than one. So let's go ahead and look at this. So we want to calculate what's called the coefficient of performance. And this is going to be equal to the desired output over the required input. And so the desired output is just simply the heat transfer of interest. So this is the heat transfer of interest over the required input, which is the work. So the the work that we have to input into the system in order to transfer that heat. Before we go further with this, we need to, there are actually two different refrigeration cycles that we can, that we need to consider. So there are two types of refrigeration cycles. So we're going to consider the first one and then we'll, we'll do the second one. So the first one is what we would typically think of as like a, a refrigerator, so I'm just going to put the first one. This would be like a refrigerator or a freezer. So these are what you typically have in your house. And so the coefficient of performance for a refrigerator or a freezer is, has this um, subscript R to represent that that's a refrigerator or freezer. So the heat transfer of interest is QL, so it's the heat that we're removing from the refrigerated space. So QL, the heat transfer of interest is QL over and then our required work. So this would be the work net in. So what we want to do is basically we're going to do the same thing we did for the for the um, for the heat engine. We so we know QL, what we want to do is calculate what the work net in is, and we're going to do that with an energy balance. So we have the work is equal to, so we're going to integrate over the cycle. And remember this, so since we have a cycle, du, so the change in the internal energy is equal to zero, because if we integrate over the entire cycle, like if we consider our cycle, so let's say this is a PV diagram. So if we have a cycle, we're 
ending, we're beginning and ending at the same state. So let's say that 1 is our beginning state. If we have a cycle, we're beginning and ending at state 1 because we're beginning and ending at the same state. So du is 0. Um, so we have the so we have this expression for that relates our work in heat transfer. If we if we go over the entire cycle, first of all we have some work net in. The work is in, so we have a so it's negative, and this is equal to if we look at our cycle. So we have QL heat transferred in. So QL is the heat transferred in, and QH is heat transferred out. So we're going to have QL minus QH. And so then if we multiply through the negative sign, we just get that the work net in is equal to QH minus QL. So what we're going to do is plug this work net into our coefficient of performance equation so we can write our coefficient of performance in terms of heat added and heat removed. So then the coefficient of performance for the refrigeration cycle is equal to QL over QH minus QL and then we can divide through I'm going to divide through the QL so if we do that we get 1 divided by QH divided by QL minus 1. So this is the coefficient of performance for the refrigeration cycle. So this is the COP for refrigeration cycle. And remember this could be referring to like a freezer as well. The second so the second refrigeration cycle that we need, want to consider is for a heat pump. So I'm just going to put that this is the second refrigeration cycle, and this is for a heat pump. And a heat pump, one thing that I want to make sure that's clear is that a heat pump is not a heat engine. So a heat pump is not... A heat engine. So what a heat pump does is it heats up a space that you're trying to take that you're trying to keep warm. So it takes heat out of the cold outside air. So let's say you're heating your house. So you're going to have some heat added to your house. So this is Q high, and this might be at some high temperature. And we have our cycle, so our um, heat pump cycle. And we're taking heat from outside. So this is our this is our heat source, and this is some T low. And so we have Q low. So we're taking heat out of the cold outside air, and we're moving that heat into the house. And this requires some work in. So this is often going to be some sort of electrical work that you're using to run your heat pump. So there's going to be work net in, and you're going to be taking heat out of the cold outside and moving it into your house. And this heat pump will still have the basically the same components as a refrigeration cycle. So you're going to have a compressor. This is our compressor. And we have a condenser here. So condenser, an evaporator. And remember, this is just like a boiler, but in a refrigeration cycle, it's called an evaporator. We have a throttle. And so this is basically the same cycle that we considered for the refrigerator. It's basically a refrigeration cycle. The main difference is, is that the heat transfer that we're interested in is slightly different. So with the refrigerator, the heat transfer that, like if we go back up, here, so when we calculate the coefficient of performance, the heat transfer that we were interested in was the heat that was being removed from the refrigerated space. So the heat that we're taking out of the refrigerated space. The, with the heat pump, the heat that we're interested in is the heat that's being transferred to the house. So the heat that we're interested in is the heat that we're 
that we're adding to the house to heat the house. And so the coefficient of performance for the heat pump is calculated slightly differently. So the coefficient of performance for the heat pump is, so once again we have our heat transfer of interest divided by the required work in, and this time the heat transfer that we're interested in is the heat that we're transferring into the house, so we're interested in Q high over the network in. The network in is going to be the same as the first refrigeration process, so the work net in is Q high over Q low, so we're just going to use that again. And if you go through an energy balance, you can verify that. So the coefficient of performance for the heat pump is equal to Q high over Q high minus Q low. And if we divide through the Q high, this is equal to 1 over 1 minus QL over Q high. So the main difference between the coefficient of performance for the heat pump and the coefficient of performance for the refrigerator is the heat transfer of interest is different. So this is the coefficient of performance for the heat pump. So this is the COP for a heat pump. So then we can treat our, our refrigeration cycle, or so our refrigerator or our heat pump, kind of, so we want to do the same sort of treatment that we did with the heat engine. With the heat engine, remember, we calculated the maximum efficiency that we could have for a heat engine, and that was for the Carnot cycle. We can do the same thing with the refrigeration cycle. So we can calculate the highest possible coefficient of performance that we can have, and so that's going to be the Carnot refrigeration cycle. And this is going to be, and I'm not going to go into as much detail with the Carnot refrigeration cycle as I did with the with the heat engine cycle because it's the same sort of idea. So remember with the, the heat engine cycle, the, so the Carnot heat engine cycle was reversible and it was reversible because everything, every single process in the heat engine was done in a special kind of way that made every process reversible and ideal and so it led to the highest efficiency that you could possibly have for the heat engine. We can do the same thing with the Carnot refrigeration cycle. We can say that every process in the Carnot refrigeration cycle is ideal and reversible. From that, we can calculate the highest possible efficient or highest possible coefficient of performance for our refrigeration cycle. So what I'm going to do is write down, so let's just summarize our coefficient of performance. So the coefficient of performance for the refrigeration cycle was 1 over QH over QL minus 1. And the coefficient of performance for a heat pump is equal to 1 over 1 minus QL over QH. So what we can do is we can, if we want to calculate the, so if we want, so if we're going to say, okay, this is for the Carnot refrigeration cycle, we can replace QH over QL with TH over TL. So remember QH over QL for a reversible process, for a reversible cycle is equal to T H over TL. So what we can do is we can say, okay, coefficient of performance for a reversible cycle or for the Carnot refrigeration cycle is 1 over, and then this is going to be TH over TL minus 1. And for the heat pump, this is going to be 1 over 1 minus TL over TH. So remember for the for the coefficient of performance, we calculate the coefficient of performance by say, saying, okay, well what is what are what heat are we 
interested in moving. So for the refrigerator, that was QL. So it's the amount of heat that we're re removing from the refrigerator. So and I'll just rewrite this. So the coefficient of performance for a refrigerator was equal to QL over the required work. And so for the for the Carnot refrigeration process, so the reversible process, this is the maximum heat that we can remove from the refrigerated space for the particular work that we're putting into this refrigerator. And then this is the, the same thing with the heat pump. So we have, so the coefficient of performance for the heat pump, for the heat that we're interested in for the heat pump is the heat that's being transferred into the house. So this is going to be QH over the work net, so the minimum amount of work. And if we're considering the heat pump for the Carnot cycle, this is going to be the maximum heat that we can transfer into the house with the work that we're, with, that we're putting into the system. So another way of putting this is let's, so we have our coefficient of performance for the refrigerator, this reversible. This is equal to one over T high over T low minus one. And then we have our coefficient of performance for the heat pump that's reversible. This is equal to one over one minus T low over T high. So these are basically the highest coefficients of performance that we can have for a refrigerator or a heat pump that's operating between these two temperatures. So an actual refrigerator or heat pump is going to have a so a real refrigerator or heat pump is going to have a coefficient of performance that's less. So we can say the co so let's say we calculate the coefficient of performance for our actual system. If the coefficient of performance is less than the coefficient of performance for the reversible um, refrigeration cycle, then we know this is irreversible. If our coefficient of performance is equal to the coefficient of performance for a reversible refrigeration cycle, we know that this is reversible. And if our coefficient of performance is greater than the coefficient of performance for a refrigeration cycle, we know that this is impossible. So this is that means that this refrigerator or heat pump is going to violate the second law and it's not possible. So basically we're going to be using the same method to figure out if our if our refrigeration cycle is can work or if it violates the second law by first calculating the coefficient of performance for our proposed refrigeration cycle and then we're going to or for the heat pump cycle and then we'll calculate the coefficient of performance for the Carnot or reversible refrigeration cycle or heat pump and then we're going to compare them and we can determine if our um, if our refrigeration or heat pump cycle violates the second law or if it's going to be possible.